is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, March the 2nd, 2019. Today is the birthday of St. Benedict of Nurcia. He was born a wealthy noble in central Italy and went off to study in the big city. While he liked the study, he didn't enjoy the big city and felt strongly led by the Lord to return to small town life. Soon after he left the big city, he encountered a hermit monk who encouraged him to take up the hermetical life, but only temporarily, which he did. After three years of solitude, Benedict came to the town of Subiaco and founded what we now think of as monastic life. He brought together men seeking a life of perfection through the twin pursuits of work and prayer, ora et labora. He wrote a rule of life in 73 chapters, which Benedict himself says is not a guide to perfection, but a guide to godliness. His impact upon the modern world and the modern church cannot be overstated. Every aspect of the Catholic faith, from theology to practice to prayer to law to vocabulary, owes Benedict of Nurcia an attribution. He was born today in AD 480 and died in March 547 at the age of 67. It's a big day for Pope birthdays. Adrian the Fourth, born 1459, died 1523. Leo the Thirteenth, born 1810, died 1903. And Pius XII, born 1876, died 1958. All celebrated March the second as their birthday. Pius XII, in particular, celebrated March the second as it was the day in 1939 that he woke up as Eugenio Pacelli, Italian cardinal, birthday boy priest who spent a lot of his time worrying about diplomatic affairs and went to bed as Pope Pius XII, Supreme Pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church. His 19 years on the chair of St. Peter were incredibly turbulent. He was elected in the midst of World War II. He smuggled numerous Jews and Catholics away from the Axis powers and was named a righteous Gentile for it. He issued the decree against communism, which prescribed excommunication for any Catholic who professed communist doctrines. He invoked ex cathedra papal infallibility with the dogma of the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in his apostolic constitution, Munificensimus Deus. He eliminated the Italian majority in the College of Cardinals, and he also wrote and spoke constantly. Mystici Corporis, the Church as the Body of Christ, Mediatra Dei on liturgical reform, Humani Generis on the Church's positions on theology and evolution, are some of the most important theological documents of the 20th century. He was a remarkable Pope who probably deserves more attention than he tends to get. Today is also the birthday of another famous man who is best known by a pseudonym. Theodore Geisel was born today in 1904 in Springfield, Massachusetts. He went to Dartmouth, where he fell in love with journalism and art, and he quickly became the editor-in-chief of Dartmouth's Jack-O-Lantern humor magazine. But he and his friends went out to a speakeasy one night, and they were busted. It was the 20s, prohibition was the law, and Geisel was banned from extracurricular activities, including his beloved magazine. And so he became a kind of ghost editor and contributed essays and artwork under his mother's maiden name. Seuss. After earning his doctorate in philosophy at Oxford, he updated his pseudonym, and the world finally had its Dr. Seuss. While he was known for children's books, Dr. Seuss used his craft for strong political commentary and activism as well. He drew cartoon strips for magazines and newspapers against the fascism of Europe. Most of his books serve as allegories for his political views, but that wasn't his intention. All of the books are meant to stand on their own without any political context, which is why a child can enjoy the Lorax without knowing anything about environmentalism, and everyone can enjoy how the Grinch stole Christmas without feeling lectured about commercialism. Dr. Seuss was beloved by many generations, and he shares a birthday with some very impressive folks. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time... Be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.